What's up so this is Chris here, Caribbeanpod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. As the title says, over here we've got a big old pot of chicken soup just bubbling away. Not your typical Caribbean chicken soup. One of my daughters tested positive for the vid, so I'm on making something that will help her fight that. Plus, it is full season, this virus season. Something which will help you, you know, as you go out and about, prevent that from, you know, we're we trying to prevent. Trying to prevent, and when we do get it, we're trying to battle it as best as we can. This soup must have a great broth because your taste buds are all screwed up. You want that nice taste. You want that flavor. You want that punch. And you want all that goodness to, you know, that immunity. You need that immunity. So flavor, a nice broth, and immunity. Those are the areas we're going to cover with this chicken soup. Stay tuned. You're going to love this one, man. And by the way, make a whole bunch, put it in the freezer. And even if you're not sick now, you're not dealing with flu-like symptoms or whatever. Later on, something comforting you want. You come home after work, you tore it out. Boom, bam. Congratulations, you're eating great. You'll see differences in this soup than the other soups I've done before. And the whole idea is to pack in a lot of flavor and vitamins and nutrients and all that stuff like that. So when I say flavor, is every step we're going to be adding flavor because when we're sick, you know, our taste buds are not all that airy and we want to make it nice and airy. So one chicken i have my oven preheating to 425 degrees i have my roasting tray here and i have an entire chicken cut up into parts so drum and thigh drum and thigh that is the back one side of the chicken breast the other side of the chicken breast and the two chicken wings to that we're going to add that to the oven but before we do so we're going to add some sea salt and you can use any salt you want and this is all about adding flavor to the dish from, from day one, from first step, you know, and from, from, from the beginnings. So we've got salt and black pepper, and we're done. We're going into the <laughs> seasoning, black pepper and salt, boy. Hey, anyhow, I don't know why from the Caribbean. Black pepper and salt is just, is just the appetizer, and hopefully main course. Caribbean green seasoning and olive oil. And Caribbean green seasoning, if you know, you know, if you don't understand this now, it is a puree or a blend of all the herbs we like using in our dishes. And that includes parsley, thyme, cilantro, culantro, some garlic, some seasoning peppers. And there's other things in here I can't remember offhand, like Spanish thyme and all that. Full ingredients available on the website for the Caribbean green seasoning. Please, I know you can get this in the in the grocery store in one of them bottles already done for you. But please avoid that. Make your own. It's so much better. I'm going to flip them over each piece and do the same thing. Then, into the middle of the oven, three, 425 degrees as I said, and let that roast off in there. An entire chicken, yeah? That's about 5 pounds of chicken you're looking at there. Nice and big. 35 minutes later, we pulled it out of the oven. A few things I wanted to mention here that I didn't mention earlier. We left the skin on to help protect especially the chicken breast so it doesn't dry up too much. We're going to allow this thing to cool down and then what we're going to do is the leg, the leg, breast, breast. We're going to take all of those. Once it's cooled down, and we're going to shred it or cut it up into pieces. We're going to remove the skin. You can toss the skin out, debone it and chop up the chicken into the pieces, the size pieces you want in the soup. The back and the two wings, that's going to be part of, and again, we're going back to flavor, the broth. The broth is going to, yo, that thing has to rock. It has to kick ASS. So let's jump into that now. So pull out your soup pot. We're on a medium heat. We need about a tablespoon of olive oil. If you want to use coconut oil, my, by all means, do so. We've got onion. And that is a large onion. We want all that onion flavor in there. That's going to add, yo, and I keep talking about flavors. That's going to, yo, there's lovely things happening in here. Give us a quick little stir stir. I'm going to turn my heat down to low. And in goes garlic. And you're going to see it's a whack of garlic. You know, that garlic there, packing a lot of punch. And the beauty about it is, Barnabas and his friends, them can't even come around. And if you don't know what Barnabas is, ask your mommy and daddy, they will tell you. It's not a rude thing. Fresh thyme. 
I'd love to say it's fresh out of my garden, but it's winter time now. I'm on a rock and no fresh time in the garden right now. Celery, nice and diced and just waiting to pull out flavors. We're just gonna give that a little sweat down for about five minutes on that low heat. And I've got one more thing to add in there. And that is some grated ginger. Now, if ginger is not your thing, make it your thing because the antioxidants and everything else in this ginger, yo, it's just, it's just healing. Trust me. Ton of ginger in there. You want about a teaspoon, I was about to say tablespoon, a teaspoon of that grated ginger. If you wanted to hide that ginger in there, what you can do is cut it up into a couple pieces, slices, add it in there, and later on take it out. But for now, we grate that in there because that's going to release a lot more flavor than if you slice it. Sweat it down, and then we're going to move on. It's been a couple minutes on that low heat. I just don't want that ginger sticking to the bottom there. That's why I'm stirring it to help pull out more flavor. And again, here I go with a flavor word. I'm going to go in with some sea salt. And don't go too heavy at this point with the salt because as you'll notice, Shortly, I'll be using chicken stock, and it's just chicken stock I bought. It's a good chicken stock I bought from the, the grocery store. I didn't have time to make my fresh chicken stock, but you'll see what I'll do to add a bit of freshness to this. So black pepper and salt, give it another little stir, and we're gonna let it go for about a minute or two before we continue. In goes a large carrot that I diced up, maybe about three quarter of a centimeter cube. Give that another quick stir. And here is where we're gonna add the chicken wings, as well as the back that we roasted off there. That's gonna add more depth of flavor. What I also like doing is draining the roasting pan into the pot as well. It's been going on that rolling boil for 20 minutes now. Here's where we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna remove the chicken back. That's done its job. We're gonna toss that in the rubbish. Or if you have your little doggy, you want to strip it down and, and give you a little, your little canine friend, by all means do so. The chicken wings as well. If you wanna break that down and get the meat out of there, you can certainly do that. The other thing I would suggest doing at this point the bay leaf has done its job, you can take that out and if you can find the pieces of thyme, especially if it's uh, a woody stalks, you can fish it out at this point as well too. I thought I had one in hand there but I'm going to try and go through there and take them out. As far as the body of this virus killing, virus protecting chicken soup is concerned, I didn't, I wasn't able to source um, egg noodles. I love egg noodles in here. I don't have any, so more of the body will come out of. I've got pumpkin here, and that is one centimeter diced pumpkin. And you'll notice everything that I add here on is going to be the same sort of dice. So we've got pumpkin. If you can't get pumpkin, you can use butternut squash, you can use buttercup squash, any one of those things. I've got your potato again, a one centimeter dice. And the last thing I like adding in there is some sweet potato. That is the purple skin Caribbean sweet potato. That is all going in there. We're gonna add some more liquid. So, so far in here, we've got two liters of chicken stock, one and a half liter of water, and I'm gonna add another liter of water in there. As it starts coming up to a boil, what I'm gonna do is go in with two bird's eye pepper, and these are green ones. We call it bird pepper or bird's eye pepper. And that's gonna give it a nice little kick. Now, that is totally optional. You don't need to add that in there, but, ah, we got one. Ha <laughs> ha, one of the stems. That's going in the rubbish. But I will give it a nice little kick, a nice little wake me up kind of thing. And while I like ending with parsley, most of my dishes, here's where I'm gonna add this parsley, because I want the nutrients that's gonna bring. I'm really packed. Yo, this, this soup is just crazy good for you, man. I'm telling you, oh, bay leaf alert. Let's fish that out of there. Another stem from that time, fish that out of there. We're gonna bring that up to a boil, yeah? It's been going on that rolling boil for about 10 minutes after I added the carrots, sweet potato and potato and all that. Building on that body of the soup, we've got kale. And that is kale that's been shredded, well, cut up into small pieces. 
and wash thoroughly. If you can't source kale, if kale is not your thing, and this is a great way to introduce people to kale. It is a great way to sneak that kale in for your kids as well too. And it packs a punch of goodness. If you cannot source kale, or as I said, if kale is not your thing, spinach, just plain old spinach, but added later on. I'm adding the kale now, simply because it's a bit more fibrous and it will take a little bit more longer to break down. Five minutes after adding the kale to the pot, we still had it on that rolling boil. Everything should be nice and tender now. So here's where we're gonna go in with all that shredded chicken, white meat, dark meat, we are not discriminating. However, if the meat brown or green or something, discriminate and put that in the rubbish. We don't want that. We're gonna bring that up to a boil. Taste it for salt after it comes up to a boil and let it go for two minutes. That chicken is already fully cooked, right? So we ain't trying to overcook nothing. Give that a nice little stir stir. Just look at that niceness. And I remember at the start of the video, we talked about the broth. We talk about the efficiency of the soup to help you battle any sort of virus or anything or prevent and flavor. It's all packed in there. Bring that up to a boil back, as I said, let it go for a couple minutes and you're done. But remember, taste it for salt. And what I would recommend doing is also adding a bit more black pepper. <laughs> Sup, soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm really trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. And just like that, you've got the ultimate virus flu fighting soup. If you wanted to add some leek in here, rock the leek. Some cabbage, rock the cabbage. Um, broccoli, you want to toss in your broccoli in here, you can do that as well. But I'm not going to settle for what I have here. Remember, you can, as this cools down, you can put it into containers, freeze it, tow it out if you want. And here's the thing, friends. If you know somebody who could use a little bit of love, like what you see, food is love. Yes, food is love. Could use a little bit of love, a little hug, a little something. Yo, make a bowl and drop it off on their porch for them. Don't visit eh? Because you see that thing that going wrong there? Mm -mm, it ain't no joke. Always a pleasure. Irie? Irie.